Hey guys, what's up? I'm Duke of Italy, and welcome back to another album review. Today, we're covering something that is quite elusive. It is known as... Or Nick, and it's their demo album. It's their album titled Demo. Now, you might be saying, Duke, why are you covering some random demo from 2013? And there's a reason for that. It's because this was on my Black Gaze chart from a couple weeks ago, and I didn't cover it because I couldn't find it for the life of me. And because it's so special and unique, I'm doing a more full review on it. Now, I think I'm going to call this series Quickies, where it's just going to be... It's going to be more in-depth than on my chart reviews, but it won't be quite as in-depth as sort of the meme album reviews. So I'll just see how this goes. If you guys like it as this is, then I'll probably keep doing that on some stuff that I figure out. And like uh, another example, something I might want to review like this would be uh, Mr. Bungle self-titled, but um, just more elusive records. Anyways, without further ado, let's get into this album. So Nick, Nick, or N-I-C, or blank, or we don't have a name, as said on Bandcamp, uh, are the worst marketed band I've ever seen in my life. And that is saying quite a bit. I mean, you have your groups like Tool, who are like, no, we will not use Spotify ever. And they have this idea of being like this elusive meme group. Yet people love Tool. Any other black gaze group is like miles more popular than this group. And yet, it's, it's a shame. Because Nick, their discography is tiny as i've found recently on bandcamp they their entire discography consists of an i i don't know if you guys would call this an ep or an lp it's kind of on the line here it'd be a shorter lp it's around 24 minutes in length i want to say uh their demo is the lp i'm talking about here they have a split lp with another group and then they released a single all within the span of less than three years uh up until 2015 and then they just disappeared forever uh, they still have a, a Facebook page. They still have an Instagram. They still have a, they have a YouTube channel that they uploaded much past their last release. So they weren't completely inactive. But clearly, naming your band just a bunch of blocks is a really poor marketing technique. Like there was, even though I saw them recommended me, I couldn't find any way to look them up. I guess if someone told me personally, I could have found them earlier. But I actually found these guys by happenstance. Uh, probably a few days after I did the Black Gaze review initially, I looked up just uh, suggestions of Black Gaze records and some website I found that the it's called Nick. And then my first exposure to these guys was on YouTube. I found a YouTube video with their whole uh, demo. And uh, then I in the description of that video, there was a link to their band camp. And I was like, thank God. Let's, let's review these guys. And I gotta say, this was worth my time. So I've never listened to any other music from the Czech Republic. Not that I would. I think this whole album's in Czech. But hey, we got a pretty good, a pretty good album here. So uh, taking after uh, a specific other black metal band I can think of, Nick, one thing they did is that they named all their songs just a number. Uh, while it doesn't have the name of the album, it's just one, two, three, and four. And on their split LP, or EP, I guess, because it's it's only around like twenty four minutes in length as well. It's um, it's continuing on the numbers, so it's it does give them a bit of a persona. So I guess in a way, there is some benefit towards it, but it's not definitely not the best. So first off, the way to listen to this is one take all the way through. There's sort of an ambient effect that goes the whole time, sort of like a whoosh. Uh, through one, two, three, and four, and it just never stops. It almost makes it feel like a complete story. And uh, while this is of the range of depressive suicidal black metal, it does retain that sort of theme all the way throughout, and it never quite strays from that. One thing that I enjoyed about this album a lot, and I'm, it worked almost every single time, is that the drumming. It was not consistent blast beats. Uh, well, that might sound like a bad thing to some who are like, oh, it's not black metal. It's not 100% blast beats. Uh, Vark never made black metal. Neither did anyone else. If it's not blast beats the whole time, it isn't real. It's dumb. Uh, it's, I, I'd like to compare it to something like Philosophem as an example, just for having different drum beats at times. And there are sort of post-rocky ideas in this album where it would start with a much more simple drum beat where there's like cymbal heavy and it would just go back and forth. It had not quite a funky feel, but it's a good build. And then, like, 
space of like maybe even no drums and then it would break out into the blast beats and it had this intense just spike of emotion another element i really really loved about this album is that the the way the guitar was uh, played with the tremolo it didn't even sound like a bunch of different notes it almost sounded like every once in a while like i forgot it was tremolo and it just sounded like one consistent just wave of sound and just pushing through and the guitar on this album it really soars it's not like taking a back seat it doesn't really even feel malicious a lot of this album feels uh spiteful and vengeful in a way the vocals on this album are amazing they're really high-pitched screams uh sort of along the line of uh sorry for mentioning them again but uh death heaven just as an example uh, on the song one it's about collapsing in on oneself and the way they use the snare is almost like a lurching heartbeat towards the end of the song and then when it's cut it's just uh it's a good emotional moment on the second track you had the blast beats that uh, started at the beginning of the song and they were so throttling they felt like they were about to go off the rails the guitar riffs here felt much more malicious in their intent they felt like it was a brand upon your skin just absolutely brutal stuff determining the lyrics here i sort of had a, an idea that it was a cynical man who thought everyone was trying to drain him so he tries to get into isolation almost like a ted kaczynski vibe and the song it ends in the, the drone effects that i talked about earlier that seems to just keep pushing throughout the rest of the album and it really shows that like after the action you're just alone uh track three doesn't beat around the push it's about killing somebody but the intent behind the vocalist or the our uh, protagonist here is kind of confusing in a way not necessarily bad but it's kind of you really have to pick it out for yourself obviously it's not in english the translation is in english that you can read but it's a, there's a way of not quite telling how it's going this song probably has the best build of any of the tracks here but it goes and goes and goes and then the guitars just are just this wall at, at a specific point and it, you're just drowned in it and the guitars they're just chugging forward with the the kick drum underneath and then eventually the blast beats come into it and that's probably uh easily one of the best post-rock crescendo examples on this whole album uh then we reach track four uh track four is in my opinion the weakest it had a very very long build with these drum hits that it felt like almost like it was trying to be funky maybe something like along the lines of like can or some other like kraut rock group in a way but it, it wasn't quite hitting for me of course this wasn't a huge deal i also thought uh it was a little too bright sounding as much as the build felt a little unnecessary the bass work was impeccably good just just the low rumble felt like it was just trudging forward over and over again when the guitars come in i thought the song really came into its own but at this point it was a little late to be a perfect track at all at this point but i am digressing just a little bit uh the track does end before you know it so it did seem a little shorter than you'd think but basically those were the only like at all weak moments on the whole album so despite being such like a poorly marketed album uh I, this was a really special experience here i loved the listen entirely there are very very few things i would change uh just such an emotionally impactful album it just felt so so lonely and just dread inducing but it never quite tried to overstep it never felt unnecessary the emotion almost entirely felt in place uh the tremolo on the guitars was gorgeous the idea of of the just the reverbed out guitars combined with tremolo so that it blend together and then your ears would slowly pick it out back and forth amazing idea i wish i could see other artists do that and i'm a big fan of it i thought the blast beats were tastefully placed just a really great usage here of course i thought the last track did lag behind it just a little bit not even a bad song but just like behind just barely and uh i gotta say nick or we don't have a name come to brazil great album i gotta recommend this and i hope that you guys will listen to it at some point i'm gonna link their youtube in the description i'll link their band camp i'd love to talk about these guys anymore and i just really hope that they make some more material and uh so that was my quickie album review for the day hope you guys enjoyed uh i really did i had a good time with this album it's funny how uh, an unknown band is the highest rated thing i've reviewed so far but um yeah it was fun uh if you guys like the video i strongly encourage you to like and subscribe uh or even share with your friends if you want this is a certainly elusive band and i think they deserve some more support uh anyway i hope you guys have a good day i'll see you later